episode of Restoring Your Voice with me, your host, Pastor David. And today I got a special guest on. So if you're watching this, this Tuesday, that means it's interview day. Uh, John Fugler, Fugler, I probably should have asked how to pronounce his last name. And I did not, but that's okay because we're going to get into a topic about performance-based Christianity. So stick around. Restoring Your Voice, with me, your host, I'm going to help you use your God-given voice. I'm going to equip you for the good works of Jesus and prepare you for the return of Jesus. I'm going to do this through hitting up hot biblical topics, problem areas in the body of Christ, in the charismatic, in other areas of the body of Christ, in an attempt to help bring clarification Purity, consecration, in love and patience at the Bible commands. I'm going to have special guests on that are going to equip you and edify you through their stories that give God the glory where you'll get different viewpoints and different areas because we're all one body and we all have a piece of the puzzle to share with one another. So I look forward to you watching, listening, and interacting All right, and with that, let's get ready to rock and roll. I'm going to bring in my guest, John. Welcome to the show, John. Well, thank you, Pastor David. And yeah, you had it front right the first time, John Fugler. So ah. way to go. <laughs> I like they say, <laughs> sometimes you should never second guess yourself, right? Like a like when you're taking a quiz. That's right. Whatever the, whatever comes to your mind first, that's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, so glad I could finally have you on. I know we ran into little issues, but hey, here we are, and that's what counts. So yeah. why don't you give our audience first your, tell, tell uh, the audience a little bit about yourself before we start. Wow, boy, that's a, that's a big question there. And um, well, I'm uh, in full-time Christian work right now. I've been in Christian media, especially Christian radio for 40 plus years. Mm. I tend to lose count after a while. Uh, love doing that and reaching people for Christ. Lots of people through Christian music, Christian teaching, um, been doing that in California, Colorado, and now I serve with uh, Trans World Radio, or TWR, heading up our, our programming. And uh, we bring uh, Christian content to, wow, 190 countries around the world. Yeah. And uh, we do that uh, every day awesome. in 300 languages. Personally, uh, my wife and I, we've been married, see if I get this right, uh, 40, uh, nine, four, 43 years. <laughs> I just got to do the adding together. Yeah, my and, uh, we've got uh, three kids and eight grandchildren. Wow. Uh, so they keep us busy when we can catch up with them. Uh, we're living in North Carolina right now and they're in different states. So we, we make the travels. But uh, yeah, it's, that's, it, I guess that's a little bit about myself. All right. Sounds good then. So, you know, like I said, one of the things I think is an important topic for us to hit up today. You know, is this whole performance-based Christianity. So what 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 did it so because you talk about how you came out of it, right? And so I guess give give a background. What what did that look like? What did that uh, look like in your life, this performance-based Christianity? Sure. Uh, well it goes back to my days as an athlete. I, I love sports, played baseball, football, basketball in high school and growing up. And so yeah, I was a performer at heart. And when I came to know the Lord, that transferred into my Christian life. Hmm. And I, uh, I adopted that. I heard uh, when I came to the Lord, the first thing that the pastor told me is uh, they led me into this back room, did some follow up with me and gave me a Bible and says, if you do, if you don't do anything else, read this, this Bible five minutes a day. Hmm. And that was great advice, except for me, it's like, okay, this is the key to the Christian life. Read wow. the Bible five minutes a day. And I faithfully did that just about every day, Pastor David, and that's a good thing. Um, but I, uh, I just kind of missed it. I, I missed Jesus along the way. I knew mm -hmm. Christ. And I was growing in my faith, but I saw that I was performing for the Lord rather than relating to the Lord. I went into full-time Christian work and mm -hmm. Um, I'm a doer and the performance. And so 
it became really the core of, of my walk with Christ is serving him. And I equated my service for the Lord to my relationship with the Lord. Mm. And that's a dangerous thing to do because that's hollow. Our relationship with the Lord comes first. Service and, and obedience follows that relationship. And when we get it backwards, it's kind of like a, a short circuit there. And that was my problem. Uh, and I had to unlearn that. And I had lived like that in my Christian life for over over 30 years, probably 40 years. And then I uh, read this book called With, uh, Reimagining Your Relationship, How You Relate to God. And it was uh, Sky Jatani uh, wrote that. And he talks about ways that we tend to relate to God. Uh, we relate to God over God, under God, uh, mm. for God, which was me. My relationship with God was for God and uh, from God. Then he said, the right way to relate to God is with God. Mm. And that just hit me. It was like, wow, this is the answer. I haven't been relating with God. I've been like, relating for him and i've been doing things and doing things and serving him and my walk with the lord had a lot of ups and downs because of that a lot of soft areas in my in my walk with jesus and and so i've been relearning this over the past few years and it's mm. been an adventure and i've especially in the last year i've seen a lot of progress i can tell because of the way that i react to life situations and life and, and to people and and my relationship with jesus is becoming richer as a result but that's kind of a, a capsulization of how that that hit me you know service is good obedience of course is good but when we get that relationship in the background and those other things in the foreground we end up empty mm. so so would you say then that you found yourself probably burning out many times because you were go 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 i did I did. Uh, in fact, in one of my, the first radio station, managed a Christian radio station in California, and the first one, it was like, it just consumed me day and night, day and night. And that was, uh, it, it did lead to burnout. It, and sometimes, at times, I didn't even know that, but I did get totally, totally burnt out. And yet I didn't know any other way. So I'd move from one ministry opportunity to, to the next. I'd end up doing the same thing uh and that you know that's dangerous it was dangerous and it causes an implosion and for me it did as well and it showed itself in a lot of areas of my life mm. and sure it probably negatively affected your relationship with other people in your family then oh yeah definitely and i i'm naturally an in introvert so uh relationships are, are sometimes i mean i get along with people i enjoy people but to go deeper in those relationships is, is a struggle for me. And I think mm -hmm. that's part also in my relationship with God uh, to that, that carries over into my relationship with God. But uh, yeah, I, I think this whole relationship thing, not only important with other people, but important in uh, how we relate to God. Mm. Uh, yeah. We could cover this probably from a come at this from a couple of different angles, but uh, so what what do you say that to relationship what, what does that look like practically and biblically biblically for people yeah it's it's interesting because i'm in the process of writing a book and i i took those three words relationship with god and i sat down and i spent days working on the word relationship what does relationship with mean uh, and then days working on well what does with mean and then the third thing of God, you know, just really exploring who God is. And, and so I took relationship with God and that relationship part, one, it's, it's two way. Uh, it's also evolving. Uh, there's a depth of relationship, certain um, levels of relationship. We think about human relationships. It, it really parallels our relationship with God. Uh, and we, and the verse that really hits me and the one that has been part of my life, really a theme verse of my life in the last few years is Philippians 3.8. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the mm -hmm. surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Paul said that, of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. And the relationship part is, is about knowing Jesus 
not just knowing about Jesus. And I like it to, I, I say it this way, I want to know the Christ of the cross. I want to know the Christ of the cross. Not just the Christ on the cross, which was a moment in time, but the Christ of the cross who is eternal. I want to know this eternal Jesus. And to me, that's the adventure. And the more time I spend with Jesus and I read through the Gospels and I just put myself into the stories and listen to Jesus, read the word and really hear the word as I read the word, this whole adventure of knowing the Christ of the cross, one who died for me, but is eternal and is, is so complex. That's the adventure I'm on right now, David. And that really is, for me, the solution to this whole performing for Jesus. It's a total switch. It's knowing Jesus deeper and deeper and deeper. And so you ask about relationship. That's where it goes. The relationship mm -hmm. goes to the knowing, the knowing uh, for me of Jesus. Right. And obviously, you know, we can't know Jesus in depth and there's a, there's a level of, of mystery there. Uh, but I like how you described it as an adventure, right? Like, yeah. like, cause like, I like to tell people, Hey, if I, if I were here for, you know, 500 more years, right. I was, I would never ever, uh, know it all. Um, and it's a constant relationship that's very, very f um, fulfilling. Uh, so, so I guess if, if somebody is trapped in this performance-based Christianity living, right, um, what would you what would you say to them? What would you say, hey, how, how do you get out of it? How, how can you um, change your viewpoint of who God is? Hmm. You know, uh, and that's, it's not like, a, we talk about performance, Christianity, and it's like, I want to know the steps. And I'm, I'm still that kind of guy, you know, well, give me the three steps. And I, I grew up reading all those books in my Christian life, the five steps to a great marriage, the, the 10 steps to rich relationship with Christ, the four steps to, you know, Christian leadership and all that. And, and so I could come and say, okay, here's the three things you need to do, David, if you want to get from, from uh, performance to relationship. And right. that's, um, so I don't want to do that, but there's, there are elements to how we can move from performance to relationship. And the first step is one, spending time with Jesus, spending time with Jesus. And that means sitting down, time in prayer, time in the word, quiet time, listening. Our time in the word isn't, well, I gotta get through the book of John this month, so I'm gonna read a chapter, you know, every day. and. No, it, it's if you're into the word, it's like you just spend time in the word mm. to know Jesus, to know the Lord. Your time in prayer isn't just a list of things that we're bringing before the Lord, but it's it's a time of relationship where you share your heart and you open up your heart to him. And this is a process that it, it doesn't happen overnight. And for me, the whole idea of, of knowing Jesus and going deep with Jesus and being willing to take time to be with Jesus, that is, that's the key. But it's, it's really our attitude as we come into that time with him. You know, the reward for coming into our time with the Lord is just to be with him. Mm. Just like yeah. if we think of our time with our, with our spouse and, we spend time with them and we just enjoy being with them. That, that's just, that that's it. And it's the same thing with God. It's not putting our prayer requests out there. It's not, you know, I want to grow in my faith and all that. It's just, man, I just want to enjoy my relationship with him. Uh, that that to me is, is the first thing you've got to do. You've got right. to come before the Lord on a regular basis and, and get to know him. I, I think even before that, come and say, Lord Jesus, I, I just confess the sin of performance. Mm. I, I've been trying to earn my, I didn't earn my salvation, but I'm sure trying to earn your favor. Right, right, <laughs> you know, right. When we enter into our relationship with Jesus, we're, we're saved by faith, you know, through grace. Yeah. By grace through faith. And and then we live, we don't live that way. We live like, well, now I'm, I'm saved, and now I've got to do all I can to be the best Christian I can. 
we, we feel coldness, we see emptiness, we actually feel distant from God, our faith is dry, we have a lot of ups and downs, and it's because we haven't gone past that, that performance and into that knowing Jesus and having that, that deep, deep relationship with him. Right. So it sounds like Matthew 6.33 summed up nicely, right? Seek yeah. first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? And then all these things will follow. It doesn't say, hey, you know, check this, check this block, or do that step, or do that, do that, do that, and that. And then, and that's how you seek the kingdom of God. No, it says seek it first, right? No 12-step process to it. No three-step process to it, right? Yeah, but, I like that. I like what you said. Seek first the kingdom. And and we just keep, we seek, we seek, we seek. Uh, and seeking the Lord is is the key there. You're right. Right. So I know I like how you start listening, right? You mentioned listening as part of prayer time. So I believe that a lot of people don't have a relationship with God. Truly, I mean, not salvation wise, just, I mean, a, a, and uh, a, him, you know, knowing him, him knowing them. So I'm not talking about salvation, just a, that kind of, um, they don't have a relationship outside of salvation, in other words. Yes. Uh, um, and so I believe, one, you know, one of those things is prayer, right? We, we, we come and we either, you know, have a laundry list ahead of time to pray about, you know, in front of God. And there's nothing wrong with a prayer list, obviously, but it's kind of, I think, I think oftentimes we, we go into prayer time. Right. We give God our list and we say, OK, God, thanks for the prayer time. Thanks for listening. Bye. They, we never bother to check and say, hey, God, do you have anything to say to me about? Mm. Right. So, yeah. Uh, would, you, would you agree with that? Oh, I totally, totally. I'm, I'm like that. And I have to kind of balance myself. Another book that I read at the first of the year is just wrecking me right now. It's called Being with God by A.J. Sherrill. I highly recommend that. And it's it's about about this whole thing of how to be with God for the sake of being with God. It's about uh, prayer, contemplative prayer. Hmm. And it's about being still before the Lord. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty neat. I, I'll tell you, I'd highly recommend that. And, and it's about the relationship and it's going, it's going deeper and deeper in that relationship. Dad, I believe that we have a problem in the church with either neglecting prayer time or we have prayer time down to, down to a, uh a science or a list, if you will. If I come mm. before God, I say this and I say that and I say that. And then I, I had, I had a good prayer time or, or we put it down to a time. You know, if you don't pray 30 minutes, if you don't pray for an hour, uh, then you didn't have sufficient prayer time or something like that. You mm -hmm. know, and it's like, would you say prayer time is quality versus quantity? Oh, is that a trick question? <laughs> 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 so I'm going to answer it's both because yeah. we can get mixed up in there. We can say, well, it's, I had five minutes of this quality time. Well, that's like saying, you know, I had five minutes of quality time with each one of my kids today. Right. It's like, no, well, that's not, you want to have quantity time with your kids too. There's something happens when you're, I remember a time with, with our sons when we drive two hours to take them to a baseball game and the time in the car was that was quantity time, but it's also quality time. But it's not like we uh, we talked about these deep issues each time. We just drove and we enjoyed our time together. So our time with God is is quantity and quality. And it's so easy to measure it. So I did my 30 minutes today. Right. Or wow, I only did 20 minutes today. I really needed to do 30. And we we get into that again to that performance. But yeah, it's the it's the quantity and the quality. I, uh, in the process of the last four years, I wrote a series of devotionals, uh, the series called Your, what, Your Life with God, 30 Days of Prayer, 30 Days of Joy, 30 Days of Faith. And I wanted to, people to come to the end, the reader come to the end of each day and not have a, a thing to do. Okay, now today, make sure you do this. Because right. at the end of 30 days, you know, I give them 30 things, 30 things to do, but they always, it always points back to the relationship with Jesus, always points back to Jesus so that there is that, that coming to him. And it's no matter whether it's on a topic of faith or whether it's on a topic of prayer or courage or encouragement, that's, that's my heart that I want to lead people on that journey uh, and and get off the merry-go-round of performance. I like it. See, there you go. It wasn't a trick question. 
Uh, and you answered it great because you, you didn't say, well, it's this. And like you said, like five minutes, like how do, how do you how do you spend time with anybody with five minutes? Right. Yeah. Or versus, oh, well, I didn't get that 30 minutes in today. Oh, what do I do? So, yeah. Um, which, which, again, comes back to, like you said, relationship. Um, and I know what that's like. I got kids, you know, and they love it when I spend time with them doing whatever it is that they love to do. And when I spend actual time with them versus, say, you said like five minutes with them, it's not going to work out. But this whole relationship thing, you know, so it's not, so you're saying it's not a relationship, in other words, where you work to get something from God, but but you work because of God. In other words, not to achieve something um, for, you know, to get to earn his love, to earn a relationship, to get into a deeper level. But out of that relationship level, out of that is that you do what you do, right? Exactly. Exactly. That's, um, you hit it right on the head there, Pastor David. That's, um, it seems so simple, doesn't it? But when we try to do it, we get it twisted the other way because it's because we are, because we are sinful. And we, before we came to Christ, uh, felt that we had to earn our way to God if we do enough good things versus the bad things. And so we carry that into our relationship with Jesus. But it's the, the simple thing is, is the, the doing things, the be doers of the word comes out of that relationship with Jesus. What I teach people is to, in order to move into this process of relationship, is to study the character qualities of Jesus. Hmm. Uh, Jesus... Um, you know, is eternal. Jesus as Lord, Jesus as the good shepherd. That's one of my best. That's my favorite. I could, I, I spent weeks and weeks on that one. You explore the quality of Jesus as a good shepherd. Wow. That'll soften your heart and you'll fall in love with Jesus more and more. As we get to know him, we have to know deeply who he is. And he is, he plays so many roles and has so many identities, I guess, or character qualities that it's an adventure exploring those. And I think I think of Paul when, when he said, I want to know Christ. In Philippians 3.8, he talked, as I, I mentioned, um, he considers everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Two verses later, he says, I want to know Christ. And I looked at that and I said, Paul, you of all people, you mean, don't you know Christ? And we, Paul Yes, he did. He did. But for him, this was a lifelong goal of his mm. is to know Christ and know him more and to know him more and to know him more. So that's good enough for me. If, if Paul still needs to know Christ, I still need to know Christ. And I will to my dying day, but I'm going to enjoy the adventure along the way. Love it. I love it. So studying Jesus, right? What what, what would you say studying Jesus uh, versus performer space. In other words, this is Jesus's life, right? And we can maybe see where he went around healing the sick, raising the dead, setting the captives free, so and so, so, so. And we might see that as Jesus living a performer space life, right? We might mm -hmm. make that leap. Or we could say Jesus did what he did out of what, go ahead, fill in the blanks. Hmm. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is love. I mean, he healed he fed, uh, and he loved people. He loved people. And he was leading them into the kingdom of God. But along the way, he healed them. He fed them, cared for them, mm. put his arms around them. Um, man, he, he, was, he, was, he was a lover of souls, lover of people. Uh, and as we get to know that love, so as we go through the Gospels, and maybe your listeners read one of the gospels and look through what jesus did in the healings and the feedings and other miracles and say oh show me the love of christ and you look at those stories differently when you see the when you're looking for the love of jesus rather than looking for the miracles of jesus mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, stop don't just keep reading through stop on one of them and read it again 
and read it again and say, God, show me the heart of Jesus through this. Mm. He, when he fed the 5,000, that was miraculous, wasn't it? Jesus right? showed his power in a great way there. But what else? Can you see the love of Jesus in there? Oh, yeah. The love of Jesus. Wow. Um, Jesus is the good shepherd. He shepherded people. And, and, and there's so many character qualities of Jesus we see in some of the same stories. And looking at it from a different angle, it's like the looking at a diamond, the facets of the diamond as you look at it. It's that same diamond, but you're looking from different angles. We need to stop and and not hurry and, and, and look at the life of Christ, not to just know it intellectually, right. but to let God teach us in our hearts and bond with our Savior. Yeah. Uh, but what about the Father's love, right? What about the part where Jesus had yet performed, he, he didn't perform any recorded miracles yet, right? Here he comes, gets baptized by a cousin John, right? God, yep. the voice comes out of heaven. This is my son in whom I, I'm well pleased, hmm. right? Mm -hmm. No performance. Jesus hadn't done anything yet, but the, but the father is saying to him, you know what? You haven't done anything, and yet I love you just as much still, right? I get chills when you say that. I really do. I'm getting chills when you say that. Um, absolutely true. Absolutely true. When I went, I was one of those guys who was sitting in the back row of a small church in the countryside on a Sunday night and heard the gospel for the first time. Well, I understood the gospel for the first time. I bet you I heard it before. And I got up and I went forward. And the thing that drew me to stand up is this. I said, God, if you can accept me for who I am, so can I. And I went forward. God accepted me. He loved me. And I went forward. Unfortunately, it took me another three or four decades to get out of that performance <laughs> and, and, and experience truly the love and acceptance of, of God. But uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that gives me chills when you mention that. With whom I'm well pleased, hadn't done anything yet. He just loved him because he was his son. That's right. And doesn't doesn't God do that, right? He, he, shepherds is, he shepherds us. Or you kept saying about, you know, loving the part of the great shepherd. And that looked like being patient with us. Like, I bet, I know, I can speak definitely for my life that God was probably up there in heaven, right? Saying, you still don't get it? What? You know, you still don't get it. You know, just like Jesus would say to his disciples, he's like, you still don't get it. And it doesn't, doesn't he, but, but he's, but he's, but he's like patient with us. He, he, he sure part, is. Part of the shepherding process is being patient yeah. with us, even yeah. when we still don't get it. Yeah. We read the, uh, we read the Bible and read the stories of these, these stupid people who just didn't get it, you know, and we read the story and we go, man, can't you see that? And the problem is we read the whole story. We see the beginning, the middle, and the end, and we look back and say, come on. But we're in the middle of that of our story with God. And so that's why sometimes we, we're kind of thick and we don't understand and we're stupid because we don't see the end. But God does, and he's so patient with us. <laughs> I'm so <Yeah>. glad. <laughs> I'm so glad. Me too. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I am a humongous recipient of God's patience. And I believe that's how we can perhaps get out of a performance uh, base mode is that God is patient with us, right? Why? Mm -hmm. Because it's a process. Life is a process. All throughout life is a process. Um, we weren't where we were, um, but we're not that anymore either, right? We're moving forward and we're not there yet, even though we're on our way. I believe we need to realize that more often is that God's patient with us and he's going to take us along and he's going to be right there with us. You know, sometimes it, it's going to take longer than, than expected or we think it should take, I should say, right? Performance space, right? Yes. It's going to take longer than I should, than I think it'll take. <laughs> like I should be there now. Why, why am I not there yet? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. What do, you, what do you think about that? Yeah, it's uh, we we get impatient with ourselves as well as with God, um, and sometimes we're harder on ourselves. We, we we're the ones that put ourselves 
uh, into this. Well, we do put ourselves into the performance, but we feel like we've got to become a better person. We've got to become right. a better Christian. And, you know, there's nothing there. I, I don't want to put down the fact that, yeah, we're supposed to be obedient. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to exhibit the fruit of the spirit and we're supposed to be loving. We're supposed to be all these things. And yet it's hollow unless Christ is at the center. Right. Uh, Jesus said in John 15, for apart from me, you can do nothing. We need to have the living Christ empowering us and living his life through us. And he's not impressed when we perform for him. It says, apart from me, you can do nothing to him. That's that's nothing. That's hard for us to, to accept, but it's true. Uh, and it's good for us that we are living a life that's uh, bonded with Jesus and a life where we're, we're knowing Christ because it's good for us. I mean, for me, when I went from that performance-based Christianity to uh, the relationship-based Christianity, there was joy, there was peace, there was rest, there was a settlement of my soul and spirit. I mean, I'm still on this journey. I keep reverting back and I have to get back on track and revert back and get back on track. But I know that this path is, is a path of freedom for me, this path of knowing Christ and getting to know him more and more. Wow. I like that. I think, I think this is going to help a lot of people who've been out there going, 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 you know, whether, whether part of life they're in, whether they're in the, in uh, the, the workplace, whether uh, as a church leader, whether in, in ministry, I believe that this is going to cover uh, any area of our life where we can get trapped in this performance uh, based lifestyle. And so I thank you for that. I thank you for pouring out to people, uh, being honest, being open. Um, is there anything else you would like to cover in this? Anything dealing with performance-based? Uh, well, I'd like to offer, um, I put something together that uh, is free and your listeners can get, because you asked, is there a, is there a, a way that people can move into the relationship basis as opposed to performance based. And so if God's moving in your heart, just download this um, 21 day devotional called the 21 day fresh faith experience. Okay. Just download it. Um, I go through seven basic areas of the Christian life. It's at freshfaith247.com and just click on 21 days. It's in the menu. So freshfaith247.com. This will, my desire is that you renew your relationship with Christ. And if you just spend five minutes a day and, you know, that five minutes again, but just invest that time, this could kind of be a catalyst, a kickoff for you. This is, if you want to get back in the groove and have some, uh, maybe a, a disciplined way of getting into that stream of that relationship with Jesus, then go ahead and download this off, off my website, start to use it and journal through it. I, I want to just offer that to your listeners and viewers, Pastor David. Awesome. And those that the link to that will be in the uh, show notes. So go check out the description, whether you're watching on video or listening by audio, check it out. Is there uh, any other, any other ways, any social media um, where people can reach you at? Yeah. Um, I do have a, um, uh, a Facebook page. Fresh Faith 24-7. If you go there, you'll find the Facebook page, and I, I post there, and you can uh, interact there. My um, Twitter handle is at John Fugler. That's J-O-N-F-U-G-L-E-R. So that's a good way to get a hold of me. And as I, I mentioned, the, the devotionals are out there. Um, but uh, my, my heart is to lead people into this Fresh Faith experience uh, based on Philippians 3.8. So if you jump into the website, there's some things there, starting with the Fresh Faith experience of 21 days. Um, get into the Word and into prayer, and I'd love to lead you that way. I love it. I love the emphasis on, you know, the Word and prayer because just two basic essential things of the Christian life. So I appreciate you coming on the show. I really do. And I said this thing, I think this is going to help a lot of people out there who, who think they have to work to, to get something from God mm. uh, versus working from a place um you know what they've already received from god thank you david it's been yeah. good to talk with you and uh, god bless you as you continue your ministry
All right. God bless you too, John. All right. We'll